David Barnson is with us this morning. All right. Thanks for being with us, David. Always appreciate it. What do you make of Musk's idea of uh, turning this thing around and going public again? Well, it's probably the only way you can exit to, by monetizing the position. Uh, the size of it would be probably too large for a private equity company to take on the equity. He's talking to Apollo about helping to finance the debt side of it. And so he wants to be the equity holder. Apollo and other big private equity companies put debt on, and then you spin it off into the public. But it is not going to be three months. Remember, he's got to get the earnings up higher from where they are now. And this is one thing i got to say. It's not a great business. He, you fix free speech, you bring some of the tech fixes to it he wants, it can become better, but they have, they have some challenges ahead to make that profitable enough for Wall Street. But that's maybe why the stock is still at 48 bucks yeah. a share as yeah. opposed to 54.20. Got that. Here's another one for you. Vice President Harris is going to meet union organizers from Amazon and Starbucks today. Looks like a full court press for unionization. What effect, if it's successful, on the business at Amazon and Starbucks? David. Okay, this is one of the most ironic things going on. It they're is. paying more than some of the unionized companies are. That's true. And they're fighting it and winning in most places. Amazon has now won twice in New York, by the way. Yep. I think they continue to win the effort. But if ultimately unionization takes place, then Amazon and Starbucks are going to end up paying less in wages and hiring less people. So the unionized efforts are working against the alleged benefit of their constituency. Amazon and Starbucks pay well. Yep. The idea of them needing to unionize is the silliest thing I've ever heard. Got a new report that shows the CDC tracked the phones of people to see if they were obeying and following COVID lockdown restrictions. Do you see this as um, an infringement on personal liberty, tracking of phones? Of course it's an infringement on personal liberty, and it does something else. In this period of time where distrust in public officials, in healthcare, in, in institutions is at an all-time high, and it did nothing but get worse throughout COVID for a lot of the reasons the prior guest was talking about. They still can't admit it's endemic. They still can't admit masks don't do anything. They can't let us have our lives back. The fact of the matter is that this now adds privacy concerns, infringement into kind of sacred parts of our life, literally, in the case of are you going to church or not. Mm -hmm. It's so over the top and preposterous, but it hits at a time that we cannot afford continued distrust. They just won't let this go. You're an original thinker, and that's oh, why you're on the show. That's I, very good. I take that as a big compliment. We look for originality. Thank you. Know? you. Good stuff, David. I am sitting next to a guy who's made a lot of money in the stock market and who's one of the premier investors in this country. His name is David, and he's going to, Barnson, Mr. Barnson, uh, answer that, please. Well, I think that the concern is when she says a stable store of value, we don't normally think of a stable or store of value or something that drops 40% in a few months. And it's done it two or three times. Every time Elon Musk tweets, the thing can go up and down. So if long term it ends up providing more stability, great. But when you start name, pe naming people who bought in, they could be trading it. There's tons of people, Warren Buffett, Nassim Taleb, very respected folks who say, look, we don't see it. I think she's right. It's different than NFTs, but I think it's a difference of degree, not yeah. of kind. It's still relying on people just assuming it'll be worth more later on. Elon Musk just changed his profile picture on Twitter. He made it one of these bored apes from an NFT collection. He just literally just did this. I don't think we need to worry about what Elon Musk is doing. We have to worry about what we're doing. Do we believe value gets defined by someone changing their avatar? Do we think value is these speculative things? Who was the guy? I think it was Jack Dorsey at Twitter. Who There was some NFT and it's down like $3 million in value. It, yeah. It's silliness. We have to get back to earnings, profits, value. Yeah, thank you, David. You're I'm welcome. so glad you're here. The Fed decision comes this afternoon. We're expecting a half-point rate hike. David, can, this, can the Fed fix inflation by raising rates? Um, they cannot fix inflation. It helps on the margin. But the real cause of this inflation was more supply side driven. Uh, the administration allowed there to be too little production of oil and gas. Uh, the economy opened up and everyone was so surprised that demand came back. Yep. And so I really think that we need more supply side solutions. The Fed needs to tighten because they're distorting asset markets. But unfortunately, it's not a quick cure for inflation. No. OK, got that. The yield on the 10 year Treasury going to just above slightly slightly above 3% yeah. as we speak, and the Fed raises rates this afternoon. Got it. Now, you're our dividend guy, and I know you bought some picks for high dividend payers. First of all, let's go with Clorox to start with. Okay, you said you would never do it again. High dividend picks versus <laughs> sorry, growth. Sorry, sorry. Dividend <laughs> exactly growth. Right, right, we right, do this. Right, right.
Corox is a little lower of a payer, about three, three and a half percent, but great grower. It got a lot cheaper. Their input prices went up with inflation. So we think it just got, it's down about 20 percent. We started buying recently. Um, what's the next one here? Truist. Truist. So that's another bank that's come way down. That's got a, a higher dividend yield, great growth, and not all the same risk that some of the big mega banks have. What's the yield on Truist? Um, I believe it's in the high threes and, and growing quite a bit. Okay, you're right. I mean, I always yeah. make the same mistake. It's not the high dividend payers, it's yeah. the, the growing. And you need that with inflation, payers. right? Because you want to keep up sure. your income growing with inflation. So we always say you want growth, you want income, but you want growth of income. Got it. Last one is Verizon. Yeah. Yeah, big name there. And that's a higher, that's a five and a half percent payer. The stock's now down to only eight times earnings. Ooh. Unlike AT&T, there's no risk of them cutting this dividend like AT&T did. They're not out buying Time Warner and other stupid things. They have a great balance sheet, but you know, it's not a great growth market. So Verizon is a deep value play, five and a half percent yield. Five and a half percent yes, yield, sir. a great value play. Yeah. But it is, that stock price, I know for a fact, is depressed down at 47. Yeah, it's been in the 50s for a while, and recently it came back down. They had to spend a lot of money to build out 5G, yeah. so now it takes a little while to kind of see those earnings come back. So there's a shot at a 5% dividend yield and a capital gain to boot Absolutely. in Verizon. Absolutely. Just like you arranged for me with Blackstone. Oh, there's been so many stories like that. <laughs> so there is.